Okay, so if you're using Visio as a tool for process diagrams, uh, we might want to look at a couple more uh, more advanced techniques. So things that you're going to come upon uh, past just doing a basic drawing that are going to be helpful for you. So let me just outline some of those things. Um, so I have my drawing here and we're just going to go through a couple of uh, additional things that you can do. Um, so if I wanted to say replicate this system here, um, yeah, maybe I have a vessel. Okay, so grab my vessel. All right. Um, so first thing that we can see is that when I start pulling things out, sometimes I get it automatically provides these little call out and, and numbering. And those can be helpful if we have a lot of uh, components and we want to identify each. However, if we're doing just a basic drawing, they can really start to pile up and get in the way. So as I add in more things like a pipeline in between the two, um, you know, once again, I've got more of these little, little tags that are on there. Um, so here's how we avoid um, all those tags coming up. So um, if we go to process engineering tab, you should have up at the top you've got a couple of uh, options. So first one, if you go to diagram options and you'll get a little pop-up box that comes up, um, we might want to disable the automatic numbering. So if we disable that, um, anytime now, if we, we pull an object and put it onto our page, um, it doesn't get those little tags on it. Okay, so that's one way you can avoid that. Otherwise, you've got to go and manually try to delete each of the tabs and it can be kind of tricky to do. Okay. Um, the other thing is if you've already started and you have a bunch of these tabs, you can also go up to process engineering and edit tag format. And once again, you'll get a little pop-up box here. And if we just delete all of these in here, um, we can see that it removes all of the tags from all of our, our components. Okay, so that's one thing that you can do to, to help yourself as you're using Visio. Um, other thing that we can do, so let me just continue drawing here. Um, I have my pipeline and I'll connect the tank to my pump. And now I want to put in uh, this valve. Okay, so I'm going to go to my valves and fittings and it looks like it would be a powered valve and I'm going to grab it and um, I'm sure I'll put it in my system like that. Okay, so um, you'll notice that um, it looks a little different. I don't have the M showing on it. And many components allow you to right click and see additional information. So for instance, on this valve, if I right click on it, um, I have a couple new little option boxes. I could set power or set valve type. Actually, both of these will bring up the same little window which allows me some different selections. So I could change the valve type, um, and it looks like I have three options, one, two, or three. And, and clicking on them, what we'll notice is that it's going to change my symbol. So as you kind of learn what the different symbols are, you might be seeking out different styles of valves or components. And uh, by right-clicking on things, we can change those. Okay. Um, in this case, I could also, I'm going to put that back to number one, but I could also assign what powers it. So in this case, if I want it to be a motorized valve, um, I may select the M and hit OK. And now my valve shows an M. And a lot of components have these additional features. So for instance, um, if I had a, a check valve here, um, maybe I right click on it and I can see set valve type and it looks like I have a number of options for different symbols. So if I want it um, a, a different variety of check valve, um, I have a number of different ways that those valves could be represented. And a lot of our components will have multiple ways that we can draw. So 
Um, for instance, grab a ball valve. Let's see if it has anything extra set valve type. And yes, it appears I have some alternate ways that I could draw or represent those, those symbols. Okay, so, um, so we have a couple of techniques there. One, right clicking on our objects to see if they have additional options for us for showing uh, our content. The other is eliminating some of the extra information that automatically gets populated on the screen so that we don't have all of those E1s, P1s, P4s um, showing up. And we do that by our process engineering uh, diagram options. Okay. okay, so I hope that helped you out with a couple of uh, small little techniques that will help you with your drawing. So being able to modify what those symbols are and eliminating some of the extra noise and content on those drawings. And those two techniques will really help you draw a good diagram and make it less uh, difficult to get on the page exactly what you want. Okay, I uh, hope that helped.